It is said that history is written by those who win. However, sometimes history can also be rewritten to the extent that the truth is left behind. History abounds with myths. I'm Jake the Voice Pa, and these are 10 historical myths that people think are fact when they are, in fact, anything but true. We commence our countdown at number 10 with a historical myth that comes short by being a rather tall tale. Everyone has heard how Napoleon Bonaparte, the great French emperor and military leader, was a short man with a huge sense of self-importance and arrogance to match. His proclaimed stature has been used to describe what is known as the Napoleon Complex, which is the idea that short men tend to be overly aggressive and overcompensate for being short. However, Napoleon Bonaparte was in fact 5 foot 6, which was actually about average for Frenchmen of that time. So, Napoleon was no shorty. At number 9, we stay in France and turn to Marie Antoinette, the last queen of France who was guillotined in the aftermath of the bloody French Revolution of 1789. She was despised for what many saw as her frivolous ways and huge expenditure on clothes and other luxuries. When told that people didn't even have bread to eat, she became infamous for declaring, Let them eat cake. The callous quote became synonymous with the Queen, except she never said it. It was only attributed to her after her death, and scholars believe the myth was perpetuated to further taint her reputation. Poor Marie Antoinette. For number eight, we turn to American history, and one of the most iconic moments in the entire American Revolution. That is, the famous all-night ride of Paul Revere on horseback. However, the ride only became famous 85 years later in an epic poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and wasn't even mentioned in Revere's obituary. For another, Revere did not ride alone, having at least two other horsemen accompanying him. And he would never have shouted, THE BRITISH ARE COMING, since it was a secret mission. It seems obvious. Another American historical myth comes in at number 7. One of the most persistent images of the mid-19th century Wild West is that of the cowboy wearing his Stetson. In fact, Stetsons were not a part of most cowboys' outfits because they were only invented in 1865 and only became popular at the end of the 1800s. Instead, cowboys of the Wild West tended to wear bowler hats, also known as the Derby, as can be seen by the iconic photograph of the Wild Bunch. Cowboys even wore sombreros, but at the height of the Wild West, it was anything but Stetsons for those hard-living rogues of the western frontier. We stay with the theme of headgear for our number six. This time, we head to Scandinavia and the infamous helmets worn by the Vikings. The helmets are invariably depicted with horns. However, this is historically incorrect, since no horned Viking helmet has ever been found. The myth can be squarely blamed on Professor Carl Emil Doeper, who was the costume designer for the very first production of Richard Wagner's epic opera Der Ring der Nibelungen in 1876, in which all Viking helmets were depicted with horns. It is a visual myth that has persisted ever since. Number 5 is so close to the heart of any American that to think of it as a myth seems like treason. All Americans equate July the 4th as the day in 1776 in which the Declaration of Independence was signed, heralding the formation of the United States. However, the truth is that the document was never drawn up and signed in one day. The process began in Philadelphia on July 1st, 1776, with July 4th being only the ratification of the Declaration. It was properly signed on August the 2nd, and even then, not by all the delegates of the Second Continental Congress. So, it is that even July the 4th has its own mythology. Few things evoke the bloodlust of the ancient Roman Empire like muscled, often enslaved gladiators fighting to the very death in the Colosseum. Countless Hollywood movies have depicted gladiators fighting themselves and even wild animals before throngs of bloodthirsty Roman citizens baying for their blood and cheering wildly at all the gore. Except that our number four suggests otherwise. Records from ancient Rome show that gladiators were revered by Romans and could enjoy long and successful careers. They were even attended by physicians and trainers. Shame on Hollywood for its Roman myths! Number three is a persistent myth about a very famous person that has been said enough times to become believed by many. Albert Einstein was one of the most brilliant scientific men of all time. He became synonymous with having the mind of a genius. It persists that this mathematical genius failed math in high school. This is false. 
In fact, the only reason he failed his entrance exam into the Swiss Polytechnic in Zurich was because he was just 16 and scared of displeasing his father. Tis simple truth, Albert Einstein was always a genius. Number two concerns Sir Walter Raleigh, an English explorer of the New World and the favourite of Queen Elizabeth I. Raleigh was a hero during the Elizabethan era, but many myths were perpetuated about him, including that he was handsome, which he was not. However, possibly most egregious of all is that Raleigh is credited with introducing both potatoes and tobacco to England. Both are false claims. Potatoes were already being grown in Italy and introduced in England from there in 1585, a year before Raleigh returned from his travels. And tobacco was introduced to England not via the New World, but via France. Sorry, Walter, old chap. Our number one is one of the most enduring myths in American history. The Salem Witch Trials of 1692 are part of American folklore and even literature, as exemplified in Arthur Miller's famous play, The Crucible. Myths abound. For one thing, not all those on trial for witchcraft were women, since six men were also tried. For another, not a single of the alleged witches were burnt at the stake. Rather, as was custom then, nearly all of them were hanged, with one crushed to death by heavy stones. Salem was simply not a case of burn witch burn! Those then are ten historical myths that people still believe to be true. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out our other top lists. Thank you very much for watching, and thanks for learning.